Yeah, well, the main engine for that retreat and for many, many approaches to meditation is mindfulness, which is really a way of trying to get closer to your experience, having your your awareness be less cluttered, less filled with like old fears or future projections so you can see much more accurately what your experience really is. It's like maybe it's pain, but it's not pain plus, you know, the anticipation of the next 50 years not feeling any better. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that was really the, the essential tool in that 10-day retreat. But right at the end, almost as a ceremonial way of saying goodbye, going to introduce this other method, which is called Metta, M-E-T-T-A, two T's. And uh, Metta means loving kindness. So it was, it was one particular form, one way of doing it. There are many, many ways of doing it, but it was my first introduction. And so there, rather than trying to just get closer to the truth of your experience, whatever it is, you're actually um, actively offering kind of goodwill and well wishes to yourself and to others. And so uh, going to did it a certain way through sensation in the body, because that was very much his approach with mindfulness is, is being aware, but it's almost like fill your body with, the sense of warmth and caring, and then you offer it ultimately to all of life, including mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. And so I was just riveted. I thought, wow, what's this? You know, like, I really want to learn this method, but I never, um, I mean, I studied it, you know, and I, I tried to understand it. And of course I was sitting with Goenka at times and he was uh, doing it in that same way right at the end of, of his mindfulness retreat. And um, it was only in 1985 that I, I went to Burma and did a three month intensive meditation retreat on loving kindness on that particular mm -hmm. technique. And, the, you know, they, they taught it uh, somewhat differently than going ahead done, but it's the same essence. And uh, it became hugely important for me in my practice. And that was my intuition beforehand anyway. It's why, you know, I really wanted to learn it. And so that was 85. I came back, I started teaching it right away mm -hmm. as a method. And then um, uh, my first book was called Loving Kindness. And that came out about 10 years later because I'm very slow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so after Deepama had ordained you um, a future teacher and you kind of push back on that. Um, this is where we're in 1974 or something along those lines. Right. And you still are kind of wandering around linking up with Joseph in yeah. Colorado and staying in these houses with people and stuff like that. Can you just walk us through where, how you went from there to how you guys ended up starting the center in, in Barrie? Mm -hmm. Um, well, I, I, you know, went so deep in my, in, uh, Calcutta in 1974, came back to the States. I was on the East Coast. Uh, I was with my family. I did sort of the, you know, preparatory work for like getting a new visa to go back to India forever and all that. And in the meantime- did they, think you, did they think you were weird when you were back with your family? Yeah, I mean, everyone was so glad to see me and they're so relieved, you know, and, <laughs> but, um, you know, I also didn't have the, either the sophistication or the language to really, you know, explain, like if they said to me as they did, are you still Jewish? I would say, <laughs> yeah, of course, you know, like I didn't know how to describe what I'd been doing. Thank you so much for watching. Just FYI, we post a new video almost every day. So make sure you comment and subscribe below so you don't miss out on anything. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really gonna love this one as well. And if you ever want to see a playlist of all of my podcasts or all of the plot twists or any other category of videos, you can find links to those in the description below.